Hi, this is Daryl Barnes with Barnes Basics, and 5D is a continuation of a mistletoe problem that we have been working on, 5A, B, C, and now we are to D. In the very first problem, I had shot at a mistletoe, and it had missed, and the pellet had continued to rise vertically, and we had learned that the initial upward velocity was 182.9 meters per second. That's the conversion of 600 feet to per second to meters per second and so I in the end kind of wanted to ask the same question if it came out of the barrel with a positive 182.9 meters per second what is the velocity when it reaches its original when it goes up stops and then comes back down and it reaches the original site of being fired so I want to use this same old lovely equation, VF squared is equal to VI squared plus 2AD, and we're going to substitute G into here, by the way. We're going to use that interchangeably. We have learned that gravity is negative 9.81 meters per second squared. It acts in a uniform manner to accelerate things downward. Doesn't matter if it's the movement is up or movement down. Gravity always acts downward, so it has a negative value. Neglecting air resistance, what is the velocity in meters per second of the pellet when it reaches the same level from which it is shot? Now, in the previous video, I had explained that if the pellet was shot vertically, then it's going to continue upward until it reaches a stopping point, because remember, gravity is acting every second to make this fall back to the earth. So what happens is even though we have a big initial velocity upward, it reaches zero meters per second at its apex, and then it starts dropping right down. And if we don't have any air resistance, it would theoretically drop down exactly back into the barrel from which it came. So to, to measure the downward velocity, <clears throat> at at the same level from which it was shot, we would say the original velocity at this apex is zero. So if this is zero meters per second, and we square it, it's going to drop out because zero squared is equal to zero. So in the end, we have this equation, Vf squared is equal to two times gravity times the distance. So if we take two, and then we plug in the value of gravity, negative 9.81 meters per second squared. And then we plug in the downward distance, which we discovered in 5, 5B. The upward, actually we asked how high did it rise. It was a positive value of that same number, but it fell back down the same distance. We just say it's negative because it's downward, negative 1705 meters. Notice that we're going to have meters times meters and seconds squared on the bottom. So when we get the square root of it, we're going to have the square root of meters squared over seconds squared. That's going to work out beautifully. Also, we got a negative value for gravity, a negative value for distance. Negative times a negative is a positive. So we're going to be able to take the square root of a positive value. That's just beautiful. So... Vf is, in effect, the square root of 2 times negative 9.81 multiplied by negative 1705. That's what we have to deal with. So, to make this rather simple, let's, I took the square root of both sides, by the way. Do the same thing to both sides and we're good to go. Let's multiply these numbers first and then we'll take the square root. First, we will work with the TI-84+, plus. I have on and clear. Remember that across the top it should say normal, fix, six, des, real, degree, and math, print. And uh, go back to the very first video in this series and I will explain how to do that. If you are using the TI Inspire CAS and you're on your home page and you pick a document at the bottom left that multiply, divide, minus, plus, if you pick that, Anyhow, go to settings on that home page, click 
down to document settings, that's two. Then you can make sure that you have float six degree normal approximate and then uh, use your nav pad to go down to OK and select that. And let's go back to that bottom page. We're not going to use calculate scratch pad. We're just going to use a regular document page in the TI Inspire CAS. So let's put this these numbers in first and then we'll take the square root later. Let's put these numbers in and then we'll go back and take the square root of those later. So here we go in the TI-84. 2 multiplied by negative 9.81 multiplied by negative 1705. Let's hit enter and I get 30 I get the square root of 33452.1 with a bunch of zeros. Okay. And if I hit second, x squared, that's the radical, divided by second, negative, which is the answer. I did not say that right. Go back. We got the number 33. The answer was 33,452.1, the square root of that. So to get the radical sign, we hit second, x squared, and then second, answer. And that will pull up that answer, and we will get 182.89. And since we are using four sig figs here, we will cut it off right here and we will say that that is 182.9 and that is meters per second and since we are calculating the downward stroke we're going to say it has a negative value that is the final velocity now what's interesting is that final velocity is the same exact answer as the upward velocity was and that's what we get when we have no air resistance Let's plug this into our TI Inspire CAS. 2 multiplied by negative 9.81 multiplied by negative 1705. Enter 33,452.1. Okay, let's take the square root of it. Control x squared will give us the radical. Control answer and hit enter will give us 182.8. 89, which we cut off, 182.9. So if you look back at the original 5a, you will see that the upward velocity going up was 182.9, and the downward was negative 182.9 meters per second. So another thing to kind of remember is if you actually could shoot exactly directly up, in, we learned that this whole route took about 30 something seconds. It would be kind of nice to step to the side so that this thing doesn't come crashing back down on you. In real life, the likelihood of you shooting exactly at 90 degrees is probably not very, not very likely. But this should, should be done out in the country. This is a country thing, definitely not a city thing. And with some air resistance, things change a little bit. So, maybe another day to get the mistletoe. We missed, but we've made some neat physics nerdly calculations in the meantime. Marvelous, and good job, everybody.